Welcome, folks, and welcome, folks, to Clem Richardson Stadium, where tonight the six and two McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets come in to play the Baker Hornets. For really, this game has a lot of playoff implications on it. Where if Baker wins out and McGill loses out, Baker's in the playoffs and McGill isn't. So, Clay, talk to us more about that and how this game is really the biggest game that Baker has played this year. Well, like you just said, Jarrett, uh, you, you were talking about playoffs as the Baker Hornets come out. No, I'm sorry, that's, the, not, that's not the Baker Hornets. Anyways, what you're talking about playoffs, you know, we have to win out. Baker has to win out, and McGill has to lose to Fairhope the next week for us to make the playoffs, for Baker to make the playoffs. If McGill wins, wins tonight, they're automatically in. Yes, and then Baker is done. Yep. Yep, and so Baker really started off the season and it wasn't looking good at all, but then uh, uh, coaching change happened and Steve Norman was named the interim coach, and ever since, Baker's looked better and better every single week and has really shown to be a competitor for the playoffs this year. Yeah, they have, and um, they, they've, they've really improved a lot since the coaching change after the Carver-Montgomery game. Yeah, and so tonight, I mean, this game, every year, I mean, Baker, in their whole time playing football, what, have they had, like, four playoff appearances? Um, Yeah, like four or five, something yeah, like that. Yeah, four playoff appearances, and McGill's been every year the last four years. So McGill is the powerhouse team in our area. So And they made the state championship, like, the last three years. Yes, and they're a competitor for state every single year. But yep. this year, you know, they've kind of had, you know, it's, it's kind of funny to say this, but it's an off year for them as they had two losses. They started their season, opened up against uh, West Monroe from Louisiana, and they, they had to travel there, and they ended up losing. That game was a game that was on ESPN. And uh, then they lost just two weeks ago to Theodore. And so they almost lost to MGM, too. The MGM took them to uh, double overtime. Yep. So they really haven't had the greatest year. They've kind of struggled to finish games. And Baker look is looking to take advantage of that tonight. Yeah, yeah they are. And, um, you know, Mc, uh, Baker beat McGill in 2014, 41-31. And I'm sure they're looking to do the same tonight. Yeah, and the teams are about to take the field, and this one should be a good one tonight. I mean, you know, McGill, they've got a lot of good players on that team, and two of those players are Spencer Arsenault, their quarterback, who isn't even their starting quarterback. It's their third-string quarterback. But their first and second string both got injured, and so now he's stepped up and played well, and he was actually named the Coastal Alabama Player of the Week last week. And also C.J. Evans, who's had an amazing season at running back for the Yellow Jackets. But, Clay, who can you expect for the Hornets tonight to make a big impact? Nick Summerlin and um, Anthony Phillips because he, he made um, – he, they both had great nights last Friday at Murphy when they won 38-20. to Yeah, and that really was a great game for the Hornets. Really their most impressive showing on offense all year. They really uh, moved the ball – like it was nothing last week against Murphy. Yeah, they did. And Anthony Phillips had two touchdowns. Um, th there was a, there was one where a great catch between two Murphy defenders. Pretty good play there. Yeah, Anthony Phillips really did have an impressive game. And like I said, Spencer Arsenault was named Player of the Week. And that's voted on, on AL.com. And he was actually the runner-up for Player of the Week to Spencer Arsenault of McGill. Yeah, Anthony Phillips and, and Argano of McGill, they're both really good players. And so now they're about to walk out for the coin toss, the captains are. And so in just a few minutes, this one's going to be getting underway. And really, all you can really say is that about this game is McGill's had an off year and Baker's had a year where they started pretty bad, but then they've gotten better every week. Yeah, kind of a unique year for the Hornets you know like you like you just said lost the first three games and then the coaching change and then they won the last was it four out of five yeah they won four out of five 
lost to Fairhope in a tough game. So now they're at four and four and with two wins this week and next week, they've got a very good chance at making the playoffs. But then still, there's still a little bit more work that's got to be done where either McGill has to lose to Fairhope or Fairhope has to lose to Bryant. One of those teams have to get another loss at some point. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, and, you know, we've been broadcasting these games all year, and really we've seen firsthand this team develop from a team that really didn't, they looked like, honestly speaking, they weren't going to win a game, but now they're on the outside looking in of the playoffs. They've got a good chance at making it happen. Yeah, they have a decent chance, but uh, like you like we said earlier, we, they have to win tonight, win next week, and then Fairhope has to beat McGill. So there's still, like you, said, like you said, work to be done for that to happen. And, yeah, when you're in high school, just keep it on playing is the best thing you can do. And, you know, that's really – they just play to the last whistle when that clock hits zero at the end of the game. That's all you can do in high school football as it really is a game of momentum. And Baker really has just gotten great momentum in their last couple games. They've had plays that have gone their way a lot, really. Whereas in the first games, they weren't really having that kind of luck to that. Yep, and, and talking more about the uh, McGill quarterback and what the Baker defense really needs to, needs to do. Uh, the, the Baker, I mean, the Baker defense... Uh, I really think they should pressure the quarterback, Spencer Argano. I think that's your best shot at getting your stop on defense. Yeah, Spencer and Arsino, he's really, he's very mobile, but he's his play style isn't a dual threat quarterback. So he'll sit back in the pocket until he has to move. But then when he does, he's very good at it. So putting pressure on him early and often is, is going to be a great thing for the Hornets to do because they kind of get him uncomfortable, whereas other teams haven't really gotten through that McGill line like they could have to put pressure on Arsenault and Evans and really make them think and adjust early on. Yep, and um, they, um, the uh, right. Spencer Argano, he, um, he threw the ball a lot last week against Bryant. Yeah, and like I said earlier, the biggest thing about high school football is to keep on playing. And we, oh, just for a second, we are going to step away for the Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem. All right, and we're back as the teams take the field. The McGill Tooling Yellow Jackets take the field from the left end zone. 
And the home team, the Baker Hornets, take the field from the right end zone, as they always do. And so this one really should be a great game tonight as two teams that are really evenly matched up the way they've been playing this year, Clay. Yeah, they have. And, you know, McGill, McGill is just a little bit better. Well, it has a little bit better record than Baker. But these two teams are going to battle out tonight. And some playoff um, spots are going to be, be, the, be determined tonight. Yeah, and so really, uh, Coach Norman in his five games as the interim head coach of the Hornets is 4-1, and one, and he's really got the Hornets playing the way everyone wants them to play, where they're executing how they're supposed to execute on offense and defense. They're making those plays that they need to make, being able to move the ball just on simple, short plays, whereas before that, we really weren't doing that, and now we've really gotten into a groove of where we're playing good football. And McGill's kind of been shaky up and down all year. So this game, I think, really is going to come down to two things. How well the McGill offensive and defensive lines play tonight and how well the play calling is for the Hornets. You, you, know, I, you know, I really agree with you on that because McGill is uh, pretty good on both sides of the ball. You know, that, that's why they're one of the top, te top teams in the county and state. McGill really is a powerhouse in this area and in this region. And really in the state, they've made multiple appearances in the last five years in the state championship game, not just in the playoffs. Whereas Baker, uh, they've only had four playoff ex appearances in their whole time as a football program, and three have came in the last six years. Yeah, uh, like three or four, or something like three or four playoff appearances. They went, they went 2012 and lost. 2014 lost to Prattville in overtime at here at the stadium. In 2016, lost at Enterprise. Yeah, now the teams have taken the field, and we're ready to get this one underway. Number 32, Bay Cummings is kicking this one away for the Yellow Jackets. The Hornets have elected to receive. This one's up and deep, and it looks like it's going to be number 13, Trelane Daltry, but he's going to drop it at the 9. He's going to pick it back up, take it to the 15, got a hole, 20, but he's going to slip up at about the 24, and that's where the Hornets are going to start. Okay, field position there for the Baker. They just have to uh, start the drive, put up some points. And correction, that was number 13, uh, DeMarquez Williams, not Trelane Daltrey. All right, and so now the Hornets offense, who's been playing very well the last few weeks, takes the field with Nick Summerlin at quarterback and Kobe Bush at halfback. And a man in motion from the right side. He's going to hand this one off to Kobe Bush up the middle. And he's going to push the pile, and it keeps on moving. But that one's going to be stopped after a gain of about four or five. Had a way to push the pile there for Kobe Bush and the Hornets offensive line. Yeah, uh, decent play there to get a few yards and set up um, second and six, I believe. Yeah, so after that gain of four, it's going to be second and six. Kobe Bush still in there, running back. During a nickel. Sumlin takes the snap. He's going to fake the handoff. Look left to Anthony Phillips, but incomplete. Slip right through the hands of Phillips. Kind of released that one a little too early there. Uh, I wouldn't say really too early. I think it was just a little bit Too forward. hard thrown. Uh, I think a, more a little, little bit forward, I believe. Yeah, it was a little too far to his forward and moving too quickly for him to get his hands on that one. Actually, McGill's so, in the dime defense, it looks like. So Sumlin takes the snap, fakes a handoff to Bush, rolls to the right side, wide open man. That's Anthony Phillips, and he picks it up at the 31. But he slips as he catches it. So that's only going to bring up a gain of two. So it's going to be fourth and four. Just like that, Josh LeBourgeois and the Hornets punt team is going to come out to kick this one away. Yeah, and for McGill, take advantage of this and maybe put some points on the board. For Baker, hope your defense rises up and makes a stop. Yeah, so LeBourgeois and the punt team is out. And McGill is back to return. That is Jordan Drake back to return this one. This one's going to roll out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Correction, that was uh, Xavier Mitchell on the return. And I think they're going to call that out more at the 30.
So they're going to start this possession at the 37-yard line. Oh, 37, okay. So Hornets defense is already on the field before the Yellow Jackets offense comes out. And so Spencer Arsenault with C.J. Evans in the backfield ready to get this game underway on the offensive side for the Yellow Jackets. Man in motion right to left. And he's going to hand it off to Evans up the middle, 40, out to the 45, rolls forward and gets eight yards on that carry. Good pickup on the first down play for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, great way to start the drive there for McGill. Uh, got nine yards on that play, just powered up the middle. Yeah, and really just saw the hole early and then <clears throat> rolled forward with that linebacker, just textbook what you're supposed to do, always fall forward. And so now, same setup again. Look for them to go the same style play again. Just try to push it up the middle on the Hornets early. So they're going to fake the handoff. Spencer Arsenal rolls to the right. He's going to look downfield for number four. He causes that 40, 35, and he gets out of bounds at the 32. That was number four, Jennings Clayton. Yeah, great chunk play there on the first play of the drive. Yeah, and they really deceived the Hornets by lining up in the same formation and set. And went with the fake handoff on the same style play to C.J. Evans, but then had Arsenault roll out and just have that wide open man there as the Hornets front seven kind of cheated that way. Yeah, it looked more like a bootleg play. Yeah, Hornets weren't expecting that one on that side with the drag route there. But now, so Arsenault in the shotgun here. In the pistol. In the pistol, my bad. And he's going to hand it off left side to C.J. Evans. He's got a big hole on that one. 25-yard line is where he's going to be brought down after a gain of eight yards. Yeah, uh, one of those chunk plays there that we saw on the pl first play of the drive. Look, looks like looks like uh, McGill's offense, uh, looks, they look unstoppable uh, just looking at these uh, first few plays. Yeah, they really push it down the field quick here against the Hornets. Only nine min only three minutes off the clock in this first quarter. And we've already seen the Hornets go three and out, and then they've pushed it all the way down to the 25. And they're going to fake the handoff this time again to C.J. Evans. Goes deep here for the end zone, and that one's caught. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. That one looked to be number eight, Kendall White. Kendall White, that was a great play there. Uh, I think he scored a touchdown last week against Bryant. Yeah, and a beautiful play, beautiful setup by the Yellow Jackets. Just had a man that beat the cornerback off the fake handoff. A textbook perfect throw, too, by that QB. Play action play there, just trick the Hornets, and look, are, they're going to line up in the uh, fake field goal formation. But Hornets adjust to it, and so now they're going to just go for the normal field goal. Watch the fake. They faked it last week against Brian and got a two-point conversion. Almost blocked, but that one's up and good. Seven to nothing. Yellow Jackets lead. Great, a great first drive there for McGill. I mean, let's hope it does. Let's hope it's not like that all game for McGill offense. Yeah, and so that one really only took two and a half minutes. They moved from their own thirty, their own thirty-five, all the way into the end zone. So two and a half minutes and sixty-five yards, but. Seven points on the board. That's exactly what you want to do if you're the Yellow Jackets. Exactly. And that's really the way teams have beaten the Hornets this year and the way the Hornets have beaten other teams this year is just quick drives that score and get the momentum early. And then it's kind of like downhill from there. But hopefully the Hornets can recover from that uh, possession on offense and defense there where both possessions really went the exact opposite of the way they wanted it to go. Well, we only have four, 44 and a half minutes remaining. <laughs> yeah, we sure do. And so now it's number 32. That is uh, Bay Cummings. He's out to kick this one away again. She's going to kick this one deep, and that one's going to be into the end zone for a touchback. Hornets are going to take this one out to 20. Uh, kind, of, kind of the same field position. Field position start as last time, and hopefully they don't go three and out again. Yeah, Hornets looking to move the ball here, try to put some points on the board. You know, after the touchback, they're going to start at the 20 and just try to try to move it down the field, try to get something going on offense as 
They really have been able to in all their last five games, but this is the best defense they have played maybe all this year. Uh, Theodore's had a really good defense, and so did Carver, but this, this one is probably the best they've played. So, Summerlin takes a snap. He's going to hand this one to Josh Pruitt, who only gets a gain of about two there. Yeah, about two yards there, and um, kind of like what we saw to the start of, on the start of the last drive, kind of the same thing. Yeah, and so the Hornets really had a similar problem that they've had all year, really, in, on that first drive is where they've just had drop balls, and they had two drop passes, or one drop pass and one that was just a little short, but this one handoff to Pruitt to the left side. It's going to get hit in the backfield for a big loss. And so that is going to be a loss about three. It's going to go from second and seven to third and ten. Yep. Uh, you know, Baker defense is uh, not Baker defense. Baker offense, Nick Summerlin is going to have to throw the ball here if he wants to um, move the ball. I mean, I, I think I really think they have a better chance throwing the ball. Yeah, and on the stop there was Garrett Smith and Christopher Heights for the McGill defense. Trips to the right for Baker. Yeah, trips to the right for Baker. Josh Brute's going to head that way. They're going to look for him wide open in the flat. He's going to take it at the 20, but man comes up but doesn't get the tackle, and he's going to get out of bounds. Looks to be enough for the first down. Very Big close. play there for the Hornets. Just enough, right on the chain. We, heard, we just heard Coach Scarborough say first down, Baker. Yeah, but that is going to be confirmed a first down by the head referee. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. Big play there for the Hornets. Man went for the hit stick but didn't get it. <laughs> and so that really cost the McGill defense. Their coaches are not going to be happy with that. He tried to go for the big hit and then just kind of got stutter step and Pruitt went around him. And so Summerlin goes to hand off to Pruitt up the middle. He's going to get hit at the line and brought down there. And that looked to be Garrett Smith again, who's now made two tackles on the night. Garrett Smith, he's, um, he's made a few plays in the start tonight. Yeah, he's shown up early to play. That's for sure. He definitely did his warm-ups. Yeah, and so uh, the Hornets got that play, got the first down. And then look to run it up the middle again. And so far tonight, I mean, it's it's early. We'll give them that. But it really hasn't worked yet. Going to have to try to change it up here. But twins to the left for the Hornets. Man moved in the backfield. And that's going to be a false start. Now, men in the backfield can move side to side, but they cannot move forward is the rule. And that's why that's called a false start. So third and 15 or second and 15 for the Hornets after the false start penalty. And it seems like McGill's been sticking with the, the nickel defense most of the night so far in this first quarter. Yeah, they like to keep five defensive backs back there. Yeah. To protect at all costs. Trips to the left for the Hornets. But they're going to look at this one for Anthony Phillips, who can't get his hands on the ball. Look to be overthrown to the left a little bit there by some of them. Phillips just couldn't get two hands on the ball. That one falls incomplete, so that'll bring up third and 15. Well, I, th I think Nick kind of threw it a little bit to the left to try to avoid the McGill player because if you throw it a little bit to the right or yeah. a little bit farther to the right, it can result can, in an interception. Yeah, because you, you can cause it to where your wide receiver has to turn back and then that defensive back can just jump the route and take it in for six. Yeah. So you got to be so careful on that Trips play. to the left again, one man to the right. So they're going to roll left with Summerlin on this play. He's going to look downfield, throws, jump ball to uh, Anthony Phillips, but that one's overthrown out of bounds. That's going to bring up fourth and 15 at the 26. Well, uh, one is trying to get something going there, but just had a few incomplete passes there. That one was um, a little bit overthrown and at the punt. Yeah, and so not the greatest start on offense for the Hornets so far tonight. But right now, we got number eight. Uh, that's Kendall White who caught that touchdown pass. He's back to return this kick. Don't want, don't want him to run it back if you're Baker. Yeah. So 
Kendall White, I mean, he's really made the biggest play of the night so far. It is early, but that was definitely the biggest play. But a short punt here, kind of end over end. It's going to hit down and out of bounds at the 47. Great. Looks like. Great field position for McGill. I mean, um, they drive down halfway down the field and score another TD. Yeah, and so after that punt that went out of bounds at the 45, that's where the Yellow Jackets are going to start their drive on the Hornet side of the field. Not the, not the greatest position you want to put your defense in, but then again, to put the other team in a bad field position, you got to kind of move the ball to do that, which the Hornets have not successfully done yet tonight. So man in motion right to left. That's Kendall White. Arsenault takes the snap. He's going to hand up to C.J. Evans up the middle. Big hole, and he gets it down to the 38 before taken down by three Hornet defenders. And so that's a gain of seven on the first down play. He's had three carries tonight, seven, eight, and eight. He's really had big carries every time he touches the ball. Yep. And it seems like on the first play of each drive for McGill, they get that little chunk eight nine-yard play. Yeah, it seems like that same play, they run it every first down, but it just seems like the Hornets can't adjust to it. So second down here, second and three at the 38. Arsenault under center. Man in motion left or right. He's going to hand it off to Kendall White, the man in motion, and gets out to the left side. Big hole, 35-30, 25-20. Break. Oh, he doesn't get past him before getting out of bounds, and that's going to be brought out of bounds at the Looks to be 17 or 18 yard line. Great run there for McGill. Yeah, big play there for the Yellow Jackets. That's going to turn out to be a 19 yard gain. Kendall White really making a lot of plays early for the Yellow Jackets. Yep, and no, another name, Spencer Argano. He's he's he kind of looks like a junior senior or senior quarterback. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's really just doing everything he's supposed to do, putting the ball on the money, handing off. Uh, without bobbling snaps and stuff. You know, he's just doing what he's supposed to do. So Arsenault takes the snap. He's going to look deep. And that one's over the hands of number six, Chris Davis. Almost, almost had a touchdown. Just just a little bit overthrown. Yeah, and that would have been back-to-back -back drives where the Yellow Jackets just drive down the field without even seeing a third down. So it's second down here. And like I said... The Yellow Jackets haven't seen a third down yet. Which is kind of scary for the Hornets defense tonight if that train continues to go on heading forward. So Arsenault with the snap, hands off to C.J. Evans' left side. Breaks a tackle, but no, he doesn't. Gets brought down at the 16. So now, like I said, that's third down. But it's going to be third and seven at the 16. Third and seven. Whoa, get another stop. Maybe hold McGill to a field goal. Make it 10 nothing. In great scoring position here. This is where you want your offense to be. And really, they can put this one in very easily with a big play here. A little short pass. Yeah, a little slant route or something like that. That could really open up a hole through the middle and put it in for six. So, Arsenal takes a snap. Fakes the handoff to Evans, right side. Low throw, incomplete. That one was intended for number 25. That's uh, Cassius Taylor that that one was intended for. So, uh, Argano, he's, um, well, while he's been pretty good, he uh, he made a couple little bit inaccurate throws. You know, that, that third down had a little bit too much on it. This one, a little bit too less. Overcorrected. Fourth down coming up. Yeah, and you know, like we said, he is a third-string quarterback. I mean, originally, I mean, he probably wasn't even – they originally probably weren't planning for him to play varsity this year. But he's had to step up after two injuries to their first and second-string quarterbacks. So kick is up and looks to be good by Bay Cummings, the Yellow Jackets kicker. So that one's good. That was a 37-yarder. You know, McGill kind of – McGill kind of reminds me of Theodore in terms of the team. They have, they're good all around. They have a good offense, a uh, great quarterback, kind of like Tyler Underwood of Theodore. Unfortunately, he got injured um, against Davison last week. Um, good good defense, good special teams, good a good field goal kicker. 
So great all-around team there uh, for McGill. Yeah, so right now uh, the Hornets are down 10 nothing, and, the, you know, they've had some games where early in the season, like we mentioned earlier, where they kind of didn't really ever get any momentum going. But <laughs> they haven't really had this situation where they got 10 points scored on them just like that early in the first quarter. And because, you know, Theodore kind of took some time to get going. Carver took some time to get going. But McGill just came out fast and aggressive here and have put 10 points on the board. We still have four minutes left in the first. And so now Bay Cummings, who just nailed that field goal, is back out to kick this one away to the Hornets. That one is low but deep, and that's one going to be taken by Nando Billups at the goal line, but that he stepped into the end zone, so that is a touchback. Took it out to the 20 now. So they'll start at the 20. Nando Billups disappointed in that. He wanted to return that one. Why wouldn't he take a, uh, take a chance at um, maybe getting a big return or running it back? Yeah, see, like, I understand if it drops in the end zone, calling it a touchback. But if a man catches it on momentum and his foot hits the goal line, I don't think that should be a touchback. I think he should be allowed to return it if he wants. I agree with you. It, it should be kind of like college and in the field yeah. where he can run it out. If it hits the ground, they, they like I understand that in high school to call it a touchback where there's not a pile for the ball if no one picks it up. That, that's the rule in college as well. Yeah, and so Kobe Bush hit hard at the line of scrimmage after the handoff there, and he's going to get no gain, second and ten. And once again, big plays tonight by Garrett Smith. He was in on that hit. He's been all over the line tonight. He's had a great night in the first quarter. That's for sure. Or my bad. That one, that one is actually Carson McClain, who's the left end. Garrett Smith plays rotates at right end. So uh, it passed to Anthony Phillips, tipped around oh. about six times, but <laughs> finally drops incomplete. Man, it seemed about like four or five different people had a hand on that one. Pinballed everywhere. Number yeah. 10 almost got that interception. That was um, Lloyd Lan Lacanzi. Sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. Yeah, and so they were just looking for Phillips on the slant there, but McGill was having none of that, and three different players from the McGill defense got their hand on that ball. Uh, Baker did that last week, tried that last week, and they got like an 80-yard touchdown catch and run there. Yeah, so it looks like uh, McGill has watched the film. They've prepared for this game, and they're, they're, they're not having anything of that. And this one's thrown short, intercepted at the 30-yard line by the Yellow Jackets. It's a great field position for the Yellow Jackets here. It's 10-0, and they're in position to put some more on the board. Great first quarter for McGill. Probably one of the probably one of the best first quarter quarters they've had all year. Yeah, really, and that's the thing. They've kind of just struggled in the first and fourth quarters where they played great football in the second quarter and the third quarter all year long. But first quarter and fourth quarter, they've really had some issues where they've blown leads and got down early. But they've had none of that tonight. They've came out and done everything they're supposed to do. So Spencer Arsenault. In the shotgun with the man in motion. He's going to take the snap. Fakes the handoff to C.J. Evans. Looks through the middle. That one's complete. Breaks a tackle and pushes three more defenders for an extra couple yards. But he's going to be brought down at the 14. But that was number 14, Bo Hightower, on the reception. Great play there for the Yellow Jackets. That's exactly how you want to start the drive. Exactly liking it. And a little bit different from the, la from the last few first plays of the drive where you get that little chunk eight, nine-yard play like I talked about earlier. That time, a little pass over the middle changed, th changed things up. Yeah, and look, what they did there is they kind of faked the handoff to Evans, and since Baker was so used to them running it on first down, they had a man wide open through the middle, and this time they do look to hand it off. That wasn't Evans. That was number 29, Reddick Barnes, but he's going to be stopped at the line. Good stop there for the Hornets. Yeah, gr yeah great. Uh, great stop there at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's all you can do. And so, uh, Yellow Jackets offense in great, great position here at the 14, but it's second and 10. 
They're trying to put some more points on the board and kind of get a big lead early. They're already up 10 nothing. Put, put it to 17 in the first quarter, and you're, you're in great position to have great momentum for the rest of the game. Hand off to C.J. Evans to the right side. He's going to be brought down after only about a gain of one or two yards here. And he's going to be brought down at 12, a gain of two. That's going to bring up third and eight. Yeah, third and eight there. I mean, maybe get another, get another stop or something like that. Baker can get, get another stop on defense. Uh, Miguel will probably have to kick a field goal, or they would kick a field goal and probably make it. Yeah, and that, that's really been the only uh, bad carry for uh, C.J. Evans tonight. His other four carries he took for more than five yards. So he's really doing exactly what his coaches want him to do and moving that ball for the Yellow Jackets. So fake the handoff left side to Evans, but thrown, oh, it's short, almost incompleted, almost intercepted there by number two, Kelvin Myers Rogers. But that one just too short, but... I mean, the quarterback threw it straight to him. Just a little bit higher, now, and it could have been an interception. Do you think number two could have ran that back there if he would have got the interception? No, nah, I don't think so because it was it was just too low and too far out I that mean, he would have had to die for it. If he would have got the interception, do you think he could run back, back in the end zone? I don't know, maybe. Because, I mean, he the, the receiver, I guess he blew the route, and Arsenault just threw it thinking he was there, but he wasn't because he, he was kind of deep in the end zone there. But so Bay Cummings out again to kick this one, and it is up. Looks like it might have been tipped, but that one's straight through and good. 13 nothing. Amazing first quarter here for McGill. Minute 23 remaining now. McGill has all the momentum right now. Yeah, and so McGill up 13 nothing early in this game. And that's exactly where you want to be, where you want your team to be if you're a coach. And this is exactly where the Hornets don't want to be right now. Exactly right. And so Baker really, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, Theodore started good early, but they weren't. They didn't start this quick. They didn't just three and out Baker every drive and uh, score every drive on Baker in the first quarter. They kind of got stopped a couple times. No one was really getting momentum early. Same thing happened with Carver. But then both those teams picked it up late and kind of snowballed into a big win. But early on, McGill has just came out really aggressive and really strong against the Hornets. Yeah, kind of like, um, you know, you know, kind of like kind of what kind of like what Baker did a few times um, to in their wins in their wins to Foley Jackson. Yeah, and so Bay Cummings is out to kick this one kick this one away again. He's been a busy man tonight, and it's a short sky kick. That one's being caught by the Hornets, recovered. Heads up play there to not get tricked by the fake. That was Niles Hadaway, and he took a big hit on that one, but held on to the ball. Great play there for the Hornets. That play was worth it there. That hit there, taking that hit was worth it. And McGill tried to use our technique that we used on Bryant uh, a few, two weeks ago, but it did not work. Oh, yeah, there's a flag on the field. That looks to be targeting. And it is, so... After Baker recovered it at the 45, they're going to move 15 up to the 40. So great starting field position for the Hornets here. I think it's going to be a personal foul, not targeting. Yeah, because in high school, uh, the targeting call is not its own standalone penalty, and it's not an ejection as it is in college. Well, targeting is an e ejection, but the uh, called per personal foul. So... Man in motion left side, and that's going to be handed off to Marquez Williams for again about three. Nice way to pick up a couple yards there for the Hornets to start the possession. Yeah, a couple yards there. Decent way to start the drive. And in and, and McGillie's territory too, so Hornets, this is a great opportunity to put some points on the board. So at the 36-yard line, Hornets look to the sideline for the call. Summerlin. Quarterback. McGill stand with He's that nickel defense. Take the snap, hand it off to Pruitt up the middle. Pruitt breaks a couple tackles and pushes the pile before getting stopped after again about three yards. So once again, 
just a short gain of two or three, and that's going to bring up third and five for the Hornets. Going to have to throw the ball if you want to uh, move the ball well. I so mean. Summerlin's going to come off the field here. Looks like they're going to go Wildcat with Kobe Bush. They've ran this formation a lot this year. Demarcus Williams to the left side, and so is, uh, that looks to be Anthony Denson. Demarcus Williams left or right. Look for a little jump pass over the middle here for a first down. Right to left for Demarcus Williams. Fakes the handoff, and he's going to push it up the middle, but stop. That's Kobe Bush that gets stopped before they blow the whistle for forward progress. It's going to bring up about fourth and two at the 31 for the Hornets at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, end of the first quarter here. A little few minute break for these Hornets and the whole team and both teams. Yeah, and so this week we had uh, some of our reporters sit down with the Hornets and do a couple of trivia games. So right now we're going to send it to football player trivia with Alyssa and Kyra. My name is Jalen Lee. My name is DeAndre Hayes. My name is AJ Denson. And, and you're watching VH1. <laughs> Which team won the most Super Bowls? The Packers. Great. Which quarterback has been in the most Super Bowls? Tom Brady. Correct. What's your head coach? No, no, no. He said, yes, I got it right on me. I'm going to get him up. I'm going to get him up. I'm going to get him up. So, last question. Who do y'all play this Friday? McGill. Kill. McGill. Kill. McGill. Kill. Kill. McGill. Kill. 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 <laughs> You're watching BH1. My name is Jalen Lee. All right, and we're back, and they just uh, announced on the field that Clem Richardson, our former principal, and the man that the stadium is na all named after, has uh, received the 7A Region 1 Award for Man of the Year. After he has, he has poured so much uh, time and commitment into this program as former coach and former principal here at Baker. Yeah, and he's also served 17 years as a teacher, and then I think 15, is it 13 or 15? I think it's like 15 years as a principal as well of Baker High School until yeah. last year when Mr. Per uh, Peru came over. Yes, and so Summerlin under center, men in motion. They're going to go to the goal line set from Twins. So Bush in the backfield. Going to roll right on this one. He's going to look left. Almost brought down by a defensive lineman there. Throws deep. That one's almost caught on the sideline by Anthony Denson. But just a little too far out for him to pull it down. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. Well, at least he didn't get sacked there where, um, where they got backed up and gave McGill an even better field position. Yeah, and so the Hornets defense really wanting to get a stop here. They've not gotten a stop all night tonight. What's it been now, three possessions or four? Uh, three, three, three possessions. Yeah, I think three. And not a stop yet. They've just moved it straight down the field on them and just not been an impressive night for the Hornets on the defensive side of the ball or the offensive side of the ball, really. They, they haven't put points on the board in the first quarter. So Arsenault takes a snap, hands it off to C.J. Evans up the middle. He's going to get a gain of about three there. Evans really just nickel and diamond all over the Hornets defense tonight. Yeah, I mean, it looks like every play seems to be a few yards. Yeah, and so that's really McGill's strategy is just kind of hand it off on first down a lot. And then once Baker starts cheating that handoff play again, they just have that guy going up the middle and, Quarterback keeps it and throws it. Yeah, I really Change it like up. Miguel's offense. Yeah, Miguel's very strong on offense side of the ball. And that's a false start right there on the offensive side of the ball for the Yellow Jackets. That's going to be number six, Chris Davis, who's listed as a running back but has converted to wide receiver after Miguel really just found out who the running back was early in the season, who was C.J. Evans, because C.J. Evans really showed up early and just showed them that he was the running back and he was going to be the one getting most of the carries. So man in motion. 
for the Yellow Jackets. Arsenault takes it, hands it off to Evans again. Oh, to the right side, big hole. He's going to get the first down and a couple more at the 45. Pushes the pile a yard or two more out to the 46-yard line. Big play there for C.J. Evans. 16-yard game there. We just talked about Evans, and um, he, he's a big impact player. We talked about him at the beginning of the broadcast. He's, a, he's one of our impact players tonight. Yeah, in the season. and now C.J. Evans has eight carries for 52 yards. Big impact for him early tonight. So Arsenault by himself in there with five wide. Man in motion. Now he's in the shotgun, hands it off up the middle. That's a two or three yard game before getting forward progress stopped. Now it's number 29, Reddick Barnes. So, Yellow Jackets have really been moving the ball well tonight. And so, they've really established the run game early. Passing game, too, is they've had a couple big pay plays in the air tonight. Yeah, McGill's good on both sides of the ball, seems like. And so, uh, Arsenault in the backfield again with Evans back there. He's going to fake the handoff to Evans. Looks deep. He's going to throw this one deep, and it's going to be overthrown, incomplete. Pass intended for number one. Or I'm sorry, that was not number one. Or was it? Yes, that was number one. Chris Al Suggs, who's listed as a defensive back. But maybe Dallas Daffin, I don't know. No, nah, he, he was their second string quarterback that was injured. Okay. So, Chris Al Suggs. They've really been rotating a lot of players that are not true wide receivers at the wide receiver position. So, like, kind of unorthodox. McGill, likes that, uh, McGill likes that pistol formation, it seems like. Yeah, and so Arsenault takes it. He's going to fake the handoff this time, but a blitz coming up the middle. But he gets around it, and he's going to make a nice mobile move. And like I said earlier, he moves great. And he's going to get a six-yard gain, and that's going to bring up fourth and one as he dives out of bounds. Hey, we're in, Mo we're in Mobile, very mobile quarterback, M-O-B-I-L-E. Mobile, mobile quarterback. Yeah, and so fourth and one at, or actually, whoa, <laughs> they marked him a whole lot shorter than he, than I thought he had, actually. Yeah, I think he, he should have got, should, uh, should got a little bit closer yeah, to the first Yeah, should have been down. at least fourth and two. I thought he, the ball was a lot further than that. His, that's where his knee hit, but I, he reached that ball pretty far. And so fourth and four for the Yellow Jackets at the 48. Basic 4-3 for Baker. They're going to go for it. They're going to take the offense off the field and go for the punt, but that's going to be delay of game. I don't know what they were doing they there. They time out. Maybe they, were kind of, maybe they were looking to fake out Baker, but then messed up. But, yeah, I thought that would have been a legal formation there because once they're set, they're not supposed to be able to move, right? They're not supposed to be able to change out may, maybe once they, they're set. Or maybe it was a timeout. Is it, it a might timeout? Have, they might have had a timeout. Yeah, uh, looks like they caught a timeout because they're not moving the chains. So, yeah, he must have caught a timeout on that one. Yep, timeout by Ernest Hill and the McGill Tool and Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and so McGill's going to have two timeouts left, nine and a half minutes. Well, or Tom, McGill did, did call a timeout, right? Or is it Baker? Yeah, McGill caught a timeout because they had the ball. Well, why, why wouldn't Baker call a timeout in this situation? It's got to be McGill. Yeah, so... Now Baker's going to send number three, Isaiah Dixon, back to return this kit. This kit coming from Bay Cummings, who's been a very busy man tonight, has had to kick a PAT, uh, four kickoffs and two field goals. So he's going to take it at the four, looking to return it. Breaks through two at the ten. Then he gets brought down at about the 13. Hornets there. Usually you want to return it from there, but Hornets just looking to get any momentum they can. Yeah, and they didn't get too much there. Not not the greatest field position. I think the worst field position all night for Baker. Yeah, it's the worst field position for either team tonight. You're right. And so already down 13-0. 
this is the part where uh, of the field where you don't want to make mistakes because if you make a mistake and fumble or throw an interception, they're right there on your neck about to score. And so, and this this is a crucial drive in the first half here to try to maybe put some points on the board. So someone in the backfield takes a snap and he's going to hand this one off to Bush who gets a big hole up the middle before being brought down at the 21 yard line. Man, if he had one more step there, that would have been a big, big play for the Hornets. Yeah, it would have been there. Kind of, kind of stealing some of uh, McGill's tactics. Getting, a, getting that chuck play there. Yeah, and so eight yards and uh, Bush again gets this one for three more yards and the first down. That's only the Hornets' second first down of the night tonight. Yeah, not very many first downs. I mean, they haven't moved the ball that much. Yeah, and so Hornets really, this is <laughs> honestly speaking, been their best drive tonight. So they haven't moved the ball until now. And so Summerlin in the shotgun with Bush to his right. Twins on both sides. He's going to hand off to Bush here up the middle who gets a gain of about a yard or two before forward progress is stopped. Just about a yard, just about a yard or two on that play there. That's McGill, so. McGill likes that nickel, uh, nickel defense. Seems like they've. I don't think they've really changed defense all night. Yeah, they have ran that nickel all night long, and have not changed. Still haven't changed. Yeah, and so and look to the right here. That's number eleven. He tips it and drops it. That was Trelane Daltrey. I don't think I don't think he could have do, uh, done much if he would have made the catch anyway. Yeah, he probably would have gotten hit and brought down early on that play. So second and or third and eight for the Hornets. Look to throw the ball here at their own twenty-seven yard line. Three men to the top of your screen trips. Now it's four. Four wide to the left side. Looks Snap to, to Summerlin. He's going to look right. It's a tunnel screen to Anthony Phillips who breaks a tackle and gets a first down. Big play there for the Hornets. Gain of 10 and a first down. Just enough there. Great Just play call there to send four out to, to the left because they have four guys who have all caught a lot of passes this year. And from that formation, they've ran a lot of plays where they have trips to the left and then send a fourth man over there. And then there's numerous screens they can run from that. So the defense really not knowing what to expect there. Yeah, great play there for Baker to, to, uh, just, to get just enough for a first down. Yeah, and so Hornets have moved the ball well on this drive so far. And so Nick Summerlin's going to take the snap and hand this one off to Kobe Bush on first down again. For a gain of about three, second and seven. Going to come up now. So ba Baker kind of doing what McGill has done, get chunk plays every, draw, uh, every play. And now men injured on the field for the Hornets. That looks to be number 56. Uh, that's going to be uh, Cam Parker. But speaking of injury, speaking of injury, Dalton Lehman, um, our left guard, had a shoulder injury last year and has returned this year. And so we talked to him this week about coming off an injury and playing during your senior year. And so we're going to send it to that. How does it feel only having two games left? Um, it's sad, really, because, you know, you've been playing with the same kids since seventh grade, some of them since freshman year. So just four years every day in the summer, every day during the school year. So it's sad only having two more weeks with them. What has high school football taught you? Um, it's taught me how to just – play with a group of people and just bond with different people that I normally wouldn't have the opportunity to bond with. How does it feel to be coming off a major shoulder injury? It's been tough, but you just got to keep with it, keep trusting the process, keep doing what the doctors tell you. I had did therapy for a while, but it's better now. All right, and we're back, and we still have an injury on the field, but now Cam Parker, the offensive lineman, is going to get up and walk off the field on his own feet. You always like to see that. Here's that have some assistance from the coaches. This one doesn't look too good. 
We hope for the best for him. That's number 56, you said? Yeah, Cam Parker, senior. Mm. And so now the Hornets have to play with a leader, have to play without a leader on their offensive line. A very, a very experienced and uh, a very experienced offensive line that has a lot of chemistry that plays well together. Uh, you know, Cameron Parker, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Buenrostro, and Dalton Lehman, as we just showed a clip on, they've been playing together basically their whole lives. And yeah, it looks like the, an ankle injury, so that's really year. not good. Yeah. We'll have to see more so about really that. really feel bad for him. Hopefully he'll be able to return. Hopefully. But Summerlin in the shotgun, trips to the right. He's going to take it, rolls right, but he's going to look left, and that's to Anthony Denson who slips. Man, does he have ice on the bottom of his shoes? Because that's about the third or fourth time he's slipped tonight. Well, we had some rain that came in like a lot yesterday or something like that. Yesterday, two days ago. Yeah, and so maybe the, maybe the field's still wet. So the, what could have been a big play is going to turn out to be third and five for the Hornets. So Summerlin takes a snap. He's going to look downfield. He's going to pass wide open. Receiver, that's Trelane Daughtry. Big play, 45. He's going to cut back, open hole, but he's not going to get any gain after that. He's going to be stopped at the 45, but still... Great play for the Hornets. That's going to be a 15-yard gain for the Hornets. And the third first down of the drive, this is by far their best possession tonight. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right about, about that. And was that DeMarquez that made the play? Or was it? No, that was Trelane Daltrey. Trelane. Okay, I get those two mixed up all the time. And so Anthony Phillips and Trelane Daltrey to the left side. Denson to the close side. And... Hand off to Bush to the left side, and now it's only going to get about a gain of one. So once again on first down, Bush to the left side. So second and nine for the Hornets. Well, like you just said, best drive going to, uh, tonight for Baker. So Summerlin to the left side after a confused handoff. And so it gets a gain of about one or two. It's going to bring up third and seven. Well, on third down here, you know, you may you may want to think about throwing the ball to try to keep the drive alive. Because yeah. if you run, you're probably going to get stopped. If you, if you don't get stopped at the line of scrimmage, you're probably going to get stopped uh, like a few yards ahead. You're still going to gonna, gonna have to punt. So third and long here for the Hornets. So Summerlin, quarterback, has really been playing well this drive. Bush to his right side. He's going to take the snap and roll to the right. He's going to look. Screenplay there. Opening number 30. And that's a big hole out to the 25. Stumbles, baby. Six feet out of the 18. Man, what a play. There was so much going on in that play. I can barely talk. And man, oh, man. Derek Nobles with the big play there. Out to about the 18. Amazing play there. He almost slipped, kind of like what that one player did uh, a few plays ago. But, but he, he stayed up. Yeah, he caught his he caught himself with his hand and stayed up, and it actually helped because he's about to get hit for a law or hit for a tackle. And that guy got confused by it because he thought he was going down, and he went right on by him. Man, what a play there for the Hornets! And now they're set up well in the red zone, looking to score here. Trips to the left. Great up Bush in the backfield. Great opportunity here. Uh, DeMarcus Williams in motion takes the handoff, but he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Or actually, that was a loss of two at the 16, not the 18. And so now they're at the 18. So... McGill still is sticking with that nickel defense. Summerlin has now came off the field. They're going to the Wildcat formation again. Pruitt at quarterback to take the snap here. And now there's going to be a timeout called by Baker. As miscommunications on that play. So now they're going to have to call it over and make adjustments. So with four minutes left in the half, 
they really are looking to score here to kind of get it to a one-score game before halftime. Yeah, they are, and hopefully they do. And it'll be really good to uh, it'll see, be a good game, have a little bit of momentum, and who gets the ball back to start the second to start the second half? Miguel, and that's why Baker really needs to put it in the end zone here because if they do, it becomes a one-score game. And then if they don't, and let's say they miss a field goal or just turn it over, McGill could potentially get a quick drive and put a field goal or a touchdown on the board before the half, or they could not score. And then start the ball, start with the ball in the second half, they could score there, and it could be a three or four possession game just like that. So the Hornets, this is a big drive and a big position here for the Hornets where they need to put at least a field goal on the board. Definitely. So Summerlin, quarterback, has had a pretty good game tonight other, aside from that interception. Comes on the field. So there's five men in the backfield. They're, they might, they're, it looks like it, but no, the, the man was on the line to the left side, but looks deep. Anthony Phillips caught, touchdown, Hornets. Great play there, Phillips, Anthony Phillips. Coming off a big game last week, and he's doing it again. Number seven is going to help the Hornets get to seven. So it's 13-6. He's a nomination of AL.com Player of the Week for a reason. That's why. Yeah, and he's running up to Spencer Arsenal, who's also have been having a great game tonight. And so Jacob Tanner up and good, and that's seven for the Hornets. Big play there for on the connection between Nick Sumlin and Anthony Phillips. Hornets fans are really pumped up about that play. Great momentum play there, and look at it this way. If Baker gets the ball back, or maybe they get a turnover or three and out, get the ball back, drive down, score, make the extra point, take the lead before halftime. Yeah, they, they, they could really get some momentum going here, as they already have. You know, we just mentioned before that play happened after the timeout that in this position is really when they need to put points on the board. Because if, if they don't, they could risk giving up some points before halftime, and then McGill gets the ball to start the second half. That's not what you want to do. And they did exactly what they need to do and put it in for the touchdown, and now it's only a six-point lead. That McGill lead cut in half. So Tanner all out to kick it away. Kind of a tight setup here for the Hornets, not really spread out too wide. He's going to kick this on low but deep, and that's going to be taken at the 11, and it's going to be ran out to the 15, but he's not going to get anywhere further brought down on a big tackle and a big hit there by Jonathan Chapman, number four. Great stop there by Chapman. And that was uh, Chris Al Suggs, who's made a couple plays tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, he has, and exact opposite on that play. Yeah, and that one, you know, he took it at the 10, and he, he kind of saw a hole, but that hole got closed up immediately by Jonathan Chapman, who just brought him down. And brought him down hard. So Hornets defense on the field looking to make a stop here before half. Before the half. Don't want to let him score again. And it's going to hand off to C.J. Evans. who got a big hole up the middle. 20-25. But he's going to be brought down there by about five, six, or seven Hornets defenders. I saw uh, Mateo Garano and uh, that looked to be Noah Spencer in on that tackle first. And then also... Tristan Ransom was in on that one and a couple others, man. The whole defense was in on that one. Yeah. The defense brought the house on that play. Yeah, so they I mean they got the first down, but then after that, it's like the defense just swarmed them. It's a man in motion. That's gonna be handed off to Kendall right to the left or the right side, and he gets to the hole, but he's gonna stumble at the line of scrimmage and fall. That's only gonna be again about one yard line for a one-yard gain there for Kendall White. So McGill had a had a good chunk play at the begin, beginning of the drive, and now they just had a couple of plays that haven't gained much. May have gained a yard. 
Yeah, and so they're looking to move the ball some more here as they have not done that yet on this drive besides that first play. So man in motion left to right. That's Kendall White, but he's going to hand it off to Evans up the middle who gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. It's going to be third and nine. Well, looks like Baker, looks like both sides of the ball. But Baker, offense and defense, really, uh, really getting warmed up now. Yeah, and so Baker's defense, this has really been their best drive. I mean, you take away that first play, and then they've stopped them twice for little to no gain. So third and long here. Hornets, if they get a stop here, they can, they'll be in decent field position with a chance to put some more points on the board before the half. So man in motion. He fakes the handoff. Blitz coming, but he's going to look to the side. Overthrown, incomplete, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Big stop there by the Hornets, and that was number 10, Terrell Crane with the pressure on Arsenal. Great defensive play there. Great defensive drive there besides that uh, big, pl uh, big play by McGill on the, on the first play. Yeah, and just like you said earlier, Clay, that's exactly what they're going to have to do is put pressure on Arsenal, and that's exactly. what they did there, and he made a bad throw, and that brought up fourth down. And so now Hornets back deep to return. And that's a deep, long kick, and that's going to roll. Take a great bounce, but it's going to be picked up and look to return. He's going to break one, but gets brought down by the other two at the eight-yard line. Not where you want to start the drive with only a minute and 33 left. That was number 13, DeMarquez Williams, on the return. Great punt there by the McGill punter there. That was perfect. Our correction, that was actually uh, uh, Chris Davis on the return. But, uh, yeah, so beautiful punt there. That's exactly what you want when you sing your punt around there, to just pin them deep inside their own 10, and that's exactly what the Yellow Jackets have done. So now with a minute 30 left, the Hornets are going to come on the field to try to put some points on the board before half, maybe. So in the shotgun with twins to the left, Man in motion, left to right. He's going to hand this one off to Pruitt up the middle, who breaks one, but gets brought down by two more after a gain about one. So it's going to be a timeout by McGill. They're going to try to stop the clock as they've got Baker pinned deep. They're trying to get a three and out and get the ball and try to get a couple more points on the board. Well, uh, with big. You know, I kind of think uh, Baker should just uh, try to run the ball. Maybe maybe they break. Maybe they bust one and get a chunk play. Yeah, well, I think what McGill is trying to do here is trying to force them to pass because uh, Baker got again about two or three on that one. But then McGill caught a timeout. And so if they keep doing that, which was what they would normally do and just run the half out, but they can't do that because if they did that, McGill's just going to use those two timeouts they have left and then stop them with about, and then they'll have about 50 seconds left to try to score before half. Oh, yeah. That's right. They do have those two timeouts. So Yeah, and so now they only have one after that timeout. But so. Yeah, it's second down. So, so Baker, yeah, they get the ball back with about. 40, 30 seconds left if McGill gets it back. So Baker's at their 11-yard line. With, their, with the ball at the 11-yard line, Pruitt in the backfield. Sumlin takes the snap, hands off to Pruitt left side. And he gets a big gain out past the first down and about four or five more. Big run there for Josh Pruitt. I really think that was the right play call there to try to, to think about running uh, so you don't risk like getting an inter interception or something like that. Yeah, you don't want to risk an interception, but that's exactly what you want to do, run to the outside, because if you run up the middle, that defensive line from McGill could, could very easily stop you. And up the middle again for only you got a gain of one or maybe nothing. And now since um, – since you get second down with about a minute left and you're a little bit away from the end zone, from your own end zone, maybe maybe go more towards your short passing. 
try, try to get some chunk plays. Yeah, or maybe so, go for the deep ball. So second and eight here for the Hornets after a gain of two by Josh Pruitt. 50 seconds left in the half. Looks like they're just going to try to run the clock down. Not really try to force their hand and try to get some points. So handoff to Pruitt left side. Gain of two again. 30 seconds left in the half. That should be the half. But no, McGill's going to take a timeout. Third and four. Baker ball at the 30. But McGill stops the clock. And so McGill looks like they're trying to get the ball back in. Maybe do some more to Baker. Yeah, so third and four, and Baker's got the ball. But, I mean, Baker really, McGill's out of timeouts. They can really just take a knee here if they don't want to risk anything or throw it deep one time. Maybe, uh, let's see, we got third down. Maybe maybe you do go for the deep ball here because you got 30 seconds left. So maybe, maybe if you go for the deep ball, maybe you win a jump ball. Or if you get intercepted, you're deep downfield where Miguel has to drive all the way down like, like from, say, the 40 or 30. Yeah, or maybe you could send your receivers deep as kind of a decoy and just have a running back kind of sitting there on the flat. And then that kind of just opens up and you got a wide back. Okay. You got a wide, you got a wide open running back short, but uh, someone's gonna roll right. And that one's tipped incomplete. It's gonna bring up fourth down. They went for the short pass there, and so Mike kind of cut out on that one, but it's back now. But on that play. Just a short passes of what they were going for, and it was incomplete. So they should have to punt this one away and see what they're going to do, bring out Josh the Bourgeois. Yeah, you don't want to go for it here because if you go for it and come up short, you give McGill a chance to put points on the board. Yeah, even with just 20 seconds left, that offense is great and can yep. make a big play happen, and that's it. And they they got six more, you know. And McGill can still put to do some – do some to Baker if they get a big return here. And so Baker takes it. It's, or a block. It's blocked, and it's picked up, and that one's going to be ran in for six by the Yellow Jackets right before the end of the half. Man, oh, man, exactly what the Hornets did not want to happen. That was number 44, Sawyer Brady, who, blocked, uh, who picked up the block putt and ran it in for six, but it looked to be number 35 James Grimes who got the block yeah great play there by him uh kind of like what um what we did or what Baker did to Murphy last last week yeah and so 19-7 with Bay Cummings out to kick the BAT to make it 20 to 7 and so special teams is out this kick is going to be up and good, 20-7. to seven. Yellow Jackets lead in this one. So just like that, the Hornets got some momentum going. But then the Yellow Jackets took it right back, and it's all their direction right now. And they get the ball to start the second half. And they could, they could go up 20 if they score early in the second half. They could, but for the last 14 seconds here, Maybe try to get a big return. If if he uh, if you're McGill, kick it out of the end zone, and make him take it at the twenty, and Baker will probably yeah. take a knee. Or maybe you could just try to kick it short on a little rolling kick, like a little squib, and I hope that that causes it to be unreturnable. Kind of kick it short to one of the uh, guys that are kind of out there to block it. They're not really, they don't practice as a returner, so. But. You never know what could happen there. But you really just don't want to have a big return happen here if you're McGill. So Bay Cummings on the field to kick this one away. 
And so this kick is short. It's an onside kick, but it's not going to go far enough for the Hornets to return it. He blown dead. You have to cross a 50 with that ball. They didn't. But the refs blew it dead before anyone touched it. I think it was more because of the uh, mo because the momentum stopped moving and it was kind of clear yeah. that it wasn't going to move any farther. And if the Hornets don't touch it, then McGill can't touch it. Right. So if McGill touches it, it's a flag. But since it wasn't going to move, neither team was going to touch it. So it just blew it dead on that one. Yep. Now so. see if you're Baker, maybe you can take a shot, deep shot at the end zone. Maybe you can have two shots at the end zone here. Yeah, th four, 14 seconds on the clock. Depending on how far Nick Summerlin can throw it. You've got 47 yards. You've got, four, you've got 47 yards to go with 14 seconds on the clock. And so basically 14 seconds, that gives you time for one or two throws downfield. If you get one, you can call the timeout and then get a second. But then you try to go for the touchdown there or maybe the field goal if you're close enough. But so Nick Sumlin's going to take it. He's going to look downfield. Deep throw, and that's going to be caught. Complete. Incomplete. Oh, ruled it's incomplete. Down. Maybe that one's reviewable. That He looked for Anthony Phillips there. Close call on, on the low pass to Anthony Phillips. Deep downfield at about the 18-yard line. I thought that one was a close call. Could have gone either way. Could have. And if you're Summerlin, just throw it as far as you can now. Maybe win a jump ball. And on that one, correction, that wasn't uh, Anthony Phillips. That was uh, Isaiah Dixon. And Dixon came up, and he thought he had it. He thought he had the catch, but refs ruled it incomplete. So six seconds left here at the 47. Pruitt's going to throw right, but incomplete. So that's going to be out three seconds on the clock. Stopped at 2.3. Should have been stopped a little bit earlier, maybe three or four seconds. But two seconds on the clock. So Hornets got one more shot downfield here to try to put points on the board. I wonder if uh, Summerlin can reach the end zone from the 50. Yeah, we haven't really seen the Hornets go too deep uh, this year and really throw any extremely deep passes. But they're going to have to here if they want to score before the half. So at the 47, Sumlin's going to have to throw it that far for six. So snap to Sumlin, four wide. He's going to look deep. He's going to throw. That one's complete to Anthony Phillips, but he's got down at about the 29. Big play there for the Hornets, but that's going to bring it up the end of the half. Hornets down 20 to 7 at halftime. Looking to make some adjustments at halftime and come out stronger in the second half. If only we had a few more seconds left. Yeah, if you had 10 or th 10 or 15 more seconds, that really could have been a bigger drive. Could have called a timeout, got another play, then kicked a field goal. But that's going to be it for the half. We're going to let the halftime shows play. We're going to be back during the third quarter. That's all. <laughs> 